Hi. Today we will tell you the history of creation, modification options and the history of combat use of the Israeli Merkava tank. Is the Merkava tank the best in the world? Let's find out. If you are new to our channel, subscribe and enable notifications about our new videos so that you don't miss anything. The Merkava is a main battle tank used by the Israel Defense Forces. The tank began development in 1970, and entered official service in 1979. Four main variants of the tank have been deployed. It was first used extensively in the 1982 Lebanon War. The name, Merkava, was derived from the IDF's initial development program name. Design criteria include rapid repair of battle damage, survivability, cost-effectiveness and off-road performance. Following the model of contemporary self-propelled howitzers, the turret assembly is located closer to the rear than in most main battle tanks. With the engine in front, this layout is intended to grant additional protection against a frontal attack to absorb some force of incoming shells, especially for the personnel in the main hull, such as the driver. It also creates more space in the rear of the tank that allows increased storage capacity and a rear entrance to the main crew compartment allowing easy access under enemy fire. This allows the tank to be used as a platform for medical disembarkation, a forward command and control station, and an infantry fighting vehicle. The rear entrance's clamshell-style doors provide overhead protection when off and unloading cargo and personnel. During the late 1960s, the Israeli army began collaborating on design notes for the Chieftain tank, which had originally been introduced to British Army service, with a view to Israel purchasing and domestically producing the vehicle. Two prototypes were delivered as part of a four-year trial. However, it was eventually decided not to sell the mark to the Israelis, which prompted them to follow their own development program. Since, at that period of time in the late 1960s, the UK was more friendly towards the Arab states and Jordan than to Israel. Israel Tall, who was serving as a brigade commander after the Suez Crisis, restarted plans to produce an Israeli-made tank, drawing on lessons from the 1973 Yom Kippur War, in which Israeli forces were outnumbered by those of the Middle East's Arab nations. By 1974, initial designs were completed and prototypes were built. After a brief set of trials, work began to retool the Telephone HaShomer Ordnance Depot for full-time development and construction. After the new facilities were completed, the Merkava was announced to the public in the International Defense Review Periodical. The first official images of the tank were then released to the American Periodical Armed Forces Journal on May 4, 1977. The IDF officially adopted the tank in December 1979. The Merkava Mark I and II were armed with a 105mm M64 gun, a license-built variant of the M68. The Mark III, Mark III Dor de Lett Baz Kassa, and the Mark IV are armed with an EMI 120mm smoothbore gun which can fire all versions of Western 120mm smoothbore tank ammunition. Each model of the Merkava has two roof-mounted 7.62mm machine guns for use by the commander and loader and another mounted co-axially with the main gun. A 60mm mortar is also fitted for firing smoke rounds or suppressing dug-in infantry anti-tank teams. All Merkava tanks are fitted with a remote-controlled M2 Browning 50 heavy machine guns, aligned with the main gun and controlled from within the turret. The 50 machine guns has proven to be useful and effective in asymmetric warfare. The tank's 1,500 horsepower turbocharged diesel engine was designed by MTU and is manufactured under license by L3 Communication Combat Propulsion Systems formerly General Dynamics. The Mark Fa's top road speed is 64 km per hour, now let's look at each modification of the Merkava tank. The Mark I, operational since 1978, is the original design created as a result of Israel Tal's decision, and was fabricated and designed for mass production. The Mark I weighed 63 tons and had a 900 horsepower, 670 kilowatts diesel engine, with a power-to-weight ratio of 14 horsepower, ton. It was armed with the 105mm M64 L71A main gun, a licensed copy of the British Royal Ordnance L7, two 7.62mm machine guns for anti-infantry defense, and a 60mm mortar mounted externally, with the mortar operator not completely protected by the tank's hull. The general design borrows the tracks and road wheels from the British Centurion tank, which had seen extensive use during the Yom Kippur War and performed well in the rocky terrain of the Golan. 
The Merkava was first used in combat during the 1982 Lebanon War, where Israel deployed 180 units. Although they were a success, the M113 APCs that accompanied them were found to have several defects and were withdrawn. Merkavas were converted into makeshift APCs or armored ambulances by taking out the pelleted ammunition racks in storage. Ten soldiers or walking wounded could enter and exit through the rear door. After the war, many adjustments and additions were noted and designed, the most important being that the 60mm mortar needed to be installed within the hull and engineered for remote firing, a valuable feature that the Israelis had initially encountered on their Centurion MK3s with their 2 inches MK.3 mortar. A shot trap was found beneath the rear of the turret bustle, where a well-placed shot could jam the turret completely. The installation of chain netting to disperse and destroy rocket-propelled grenades and anti-tank rockets before impacting the primary armor increased survivability. The Merkava Mark II was first introduced into general service in April 1983. While fundamentally the same as the Merkava Mark I, it incorporated numerous small adjustments as a result of the previous year's incursion into Lebanon. The new tank was optimized for urban warfare and low-intensity conflicts, with a weight and engine no greater than the Mark I. The Mark II used the same 105mm main gun and 7.62mm machine guns as the Mark I, but the 60mm mortar was redesigned during construction to be located within the hull and configured for remote firing to remove the need to expose the operator to enemy small arms fire. An Israeli-designed automatic transmission and increased fuel storage for increased range was installed on all further Mark IIs. Anti-rocket netting was fitted for increased survivability against infantry equipped with anti-tank rockets. Many minor improvements were made to the fire control system. Updated meteorological sensors, crosswind analyzers, and thermographic optics and image intensifiers gave greater visibility and battlefield awareness. Newer versions of the original Mark II were designated Mark IIb, with thermal optics and unspecified updates to the fire control system. Mark IIc, with more armor on the top of the turret to improve protection against attack from the air. Mark IId, with modular composite armor on the chassis and turret, allowing rapid replacement of damaged armor. In 2015 the IDF had begun a plan to take the old models out of storage and repurpose them as heavy armored personnel carriers. Cannons, turrets, and spaces used to store tank shells inside the hull were removed to create a personnel carrier that outperforms the lighter M113 APC. Converting hundreds of Mark II chassis provides a low-cost way to upgrade support units capabilities to perform medical, logistical, and rescue missions. By late 2016, after 33 years of service, the last conscripted brigade to operate Merkava 2s was scheduled to transition to Merkava 2 and Merkava 4 tanks for battlefield missions, relegating the vehicles to reserve forces for border patrols during conflicts and conversion to personnel carriers. The Merkava Mark III was introduced in December 1989 and was in production until 2003. As of 2016, the Merkava 3 is by far the most numerous tank in frontline IDF service. Compared to the Merkava 2, it has upgrades to the drivetrain, powertrain, armament, and electronic systems. The most prominent addition was the incorporation of the locally developed EMI 120mm gun. This gun and a larger 1,200 horsepower 890 kilowatts diesel engine increased the total weight of the tank to 65 tons 143,000 pounds 64.86 t, but the larger engine increased the maximum cruising speed to 60 kilometers per hour 37.28 miles per hour. The turret was re-engineered for movement independent of the tank chassis, allowing it to track a target regardless of the tank's movement. Many other changes were made, including external two-way telephone for secure communications between the tank crew and dismounted infantry upgraded ammunition storage containers to minimize ammunition cook-off addition of laser designators incorporation of the CASIG modular armor system designed for rapid replacement and repair in the battlefield and for quick upgrading as new designs and sophisticated materials become available baz system the 1995 Mark III Baz had a number of updates and additional systems including NBC's protection systems, locally developed central air conditioning system, added improvements in ballistic protection. The Mark III D has removable modular composite armor on the chassis and turret. Door delete. 
The last generation of the Mark III class was the Mark III D door delete, which included several components as prototypes to be introduced in the Mark IV. Upgraded and strengthened tracks. Installation of the ROWS. The Mark IV is the most recent variant of the Merkava tank that has been in development since 1999 and production since 2004. The upgrade's development was announced in an October 1999 edition of the Bamachane military publication. However, the Merkava Mark III remained in production until 2003. The first Merkava IVs were in production in limited numbers by the end of 2004. Removable modular armor from the Merkava Mark III-D is used on all sides, including the top and a V-shaped belly armor pack for the underside. This modular system is designed to allow for damaged tanks to be rapidly repaired and returned to the field. Because rear armor is thinner, chains with iron balls are attached in order to detonate projectiles before they hit the main armored hull. It is the first contemporary tank with no loaders hatch in the turret roof, because any aperture in the turret roof increases risk of penetration by ATGMs. Tank rounds are stored in individual fireproof canisters, which reduce the chance of cook-offs in a fire inside the tank. The turret is electrically powered, hydraulic turrets use flammable liquid that ignites if the turret is penetrated, and, dry, no active rounds are stored in it. Some features, such as hull shaping, exterior non-reflective paints, radar cross-section reduction, and shielding for engine heat plumes mixing with air particles, reduced infrared signature, to confuse enemy thermal imagers, were carried over from the IAI Levy program of the Israeli Air Force to make the tank harder to spot by heat sensors and radar. The Mark IV includes the larger 120mm main gun of the previous versions, but can fire a wider variety of ammunition, including heat and sabot rounds like the APF SDS Kinetic Energy Penetrator, using an electrical semi-automatic revolving magazine for 10 rounds. It also includes a much larger 12.7mm machine gun for anti-vehicle operations, most commonly used against technicals. The tank carries the Israeli Elbit Systems BMS, a centralized system that takes data from tracked units and UAVs in theater, displays it on color screens, and distributes it in encrypted form to all other units equipped with BMS in a given theater. The Merkava IV has been designed for rapid repair and fast replacement of damaged armor, with modular armor that can be easily removed and replaced. It is also designed to be cost-effective in production and maintenance, its cost is lower than that of a number of other tanks used by Western armies. The tank has a high-performance air conditioning system and can even be fitted with a toilet for long-duration missions. The Merkava Mark IV Meters MK4M Windbreaker is a Merkava Mark IV equipped with the Trophy Active Protection System APS, designated Male Ruach. The serial production of Mark IV meters tanks started in 2009 and the first whole brigade of Mark IV milliseconds was declared operational in 2011. The Trophy APS successfully intercepted rocket-propelled grenades and anti-tank missiles, including nine M133 Cornets, fired by Hamas before and during Operation Protective Edge in 2014. Iron Vision Helmet Mounted Display System in mid-2017, the IDF will begin trials of Elbit's Iron Vision, the world's first helmet-mounted display for tanks. Israel's Elbit, which developed the helmet-mounted display system for the F-35, plans Iron Vision to use a circular review system as a number of externally mounted cameras to project the 360 degrees view of a tank's surroundings onto the helmet-mounted display of its crew members. This allows the crew members to stay inside the tank, without having to open the hatches to see outside. The Merkava tank has a rich history of combat use. 1982 Lebanon War. The Merkava was used widely during the 1982 Lebanon War. The tank outperformed contemporary Syrian tanks, mostly T-62s, and proved largely immune to the anti-tank weapons of the time, the AT-3 Sagar and RPG-7, that were used against it. It was judged to be a significant improvement over Israel's previously most effective main battle tank, the Centurion. Israel lost dozens of tanks during the conflict, including a number of Merkavas. Second Intifada. In February 2002, a Merkava III was destroyed by a roadside bomb near Netzerim in the Gaza Strip. The tank was lured into intervening in an attack on a settler convoy. The tank went over a heavy mine, estimated 100 kilograms TNT, which detonated and totally destroyed the tank. Four soldiers were killed in the blast. 
This was the first main battle tank to be destroyed during the Second Intifada. A second Israeli tank, a Merkava II or Merkava III, was destroyed a month later in the same area and a further three soldiers were killed. A third Merkava II or III tanks was destroyed near the Kisufam crossing, when one soldier was killed and two wounded. 2006 Lebanon War During the 2006 Lebanon War, five Merkava tanks were destroyed, most of the tanks engaged were Merkava III's and earlier versions, only a few of the tanks used during the war were Merkava Mark Fa since by 2006 they had still only entered service in limited numbers. Hezbollah fired over 1,000 anti-tank missiles during the conflict against both tanks and dismounted infantry. Some 45% of all tanks and armored vehicles hit with anti-tank missiles during the conflict suffered some form of armor penetration. In total, 15 tank crewmen were killed by these ATGM penetrations. The penetrations were caused by tandem warhead missiles. Hezbollah weaponry was believed to include advanced Russian RPG-29 Vampyr, at 5 Concours, at 13 Metm, and laser-guided at 14 Cornet heat missiles. The IDF reported finding state-of-the-art Cornet ATGMs on Hezbollah positions in the village of Gondoria. Several months after the ceasefire, reports have provided detailed photographic evidence that Cornet ATGMs were indeed both in possession of, and used by, Hezbollah in this area. Another Merkava IV tank crewman was killed when a tank ran over an improvised explosive device IED. This tank had additional V-shaped underside armor, limiting casualties to just one of the seven personnel, four crewmen and three infantrymen, on board. In total, five Merkava tanks, two Merkava IIs, one Merkava III, and two Merkava IVs were destroyed. Of these two Merkava Mark IVs, one was by powerful IEDs, and the other by Russian at 14 Cornet missiles. The Israeli military said that it was satisfied with the Merkava Mark Fa's performance, and attributed problems to insufficient training before the war. In total, 50 Merkava tanks, predominantly Merkava IIs and IIIs, were hit, eight of which remained serviceable on the battlefield. 21 tanks suffered armor penetrations, 15 from missiles, and 6 from IEDs and anti-tank mines. After the 2006 war, and as the IDF becomes increasingly involved in unconventional and guerrilla warfare, some analysts say the Merkava is too vulnerable to advanced anti-tank missiles, that in their manned portable types can be fielded by guerrilla warfare opponents. Other post-war analysts, including David Eschel, disagree, arguing that reports of losses to Merkavas were overstated and that summing up the performance of Merkava tanks, especially the latest version Merkava Mark IV, most tank crews agree that, in spite of the losses sustained and some major flaws in tactical conduct, the tank proved its mettle in its first high-saturation combat. On a comparison done by the Armor Corps newsletter, it was shown that the average number of crewmen killed per tank penetrated by missile rocket was reduced from 2 during the Yom Kippur War to 1.5 during the 1982 Lebanon War to 1 during the 2006 Lebanon War proving how, even in the face of the improvement in anti-tank weaponry, the Merkava series tanks provide increasingly better protection to its crew. The IDF wanted to increase orders of new Merkava Mark IV tanks, and plan to add the Trophy Active Defense System to Merkava Mark IV tanks, and to increase joint training between crews and Israeli anti-tank soldiers. Operation Cast Lead The Merkava IV was used more extensively during the Gaza War, as it had been received by the IDF in increasing numbers since 2006, replacing more of the Merkava II and III versions of the tank that were in service. One brigade of Merkava IVs managed to bisect the Gaza Strip in five hours without Israeli casualties. The commander of the brigade stated that battlefield tactics had been greatly revised since 2006. Tactics had also been modified to focus on asymmetric or guerrilla war threats, in addition to the conventional war scenarios that the Merkava had primarily been designed to combat. The IDF also deployed the Merkava II and III during the war. Gaza Border Areas by October 2010, the IDF had begun to equip the first Merkava IVs with the Trophy Active Protection System, to improve the tank's protection against advanced anti-tank missiles which use tandem charge heat warheads. Added protection systems included an Elbit laser warning system and EMI and built smoke screen grenades. In December 2010, Hamas fired an AT-14 Cornet anti-tank missile at a Merkava Mark III tank stationed on the Israel-Gaza border near al baray it had hitherto not been suspected that Hamas possessed such an advanced missile. 
The missile penetrated the tank's armor, but caused no injuries among its crew. As a result of the attack, Israel decided to deploy its first Merkava Mark IV battalion equipped with the trophy system along the Gaza border. On March 1, 2011, a Merkava Mk4 stationed near the Gaza border, equipped with the Trophy Active Protection System, successfully foiled a missile attack against it, marking the system's first operational success. Operation Protective Edge 2014. No tanks were damaged during Operation Protective Edge. The Merkava Mk4 meters Merkava Mk4M tanks, fitted with the Trophy Active Protection System, intercepted anti-tank missiles and RPGs on dozens of different occasions during the ground operation. During the operation, the system intercepted anti-tank weapons, primarily Cornet, as well as MATM and RPG-29, proving itself effective against manned portable anti-tank weapons. By identifying the source of fire, Trophy also allowed tanks to kill the Hamas anti-tank team on one occasion. Giora Katz, head of Rafael's land division, stated that it was a breakthrough because it is the first time in military history where an active defense system has proven itself in intense fighting. 401st Brigade, equipped with Merkava Mk, 4m tanks, alone killed between 120 to 130 Hamas militants during the ground fighting phase of Operation Protective Edge, according to the IDF. Thank you for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel.